Story 1, No One is Useless There was a boy who did not take the university entrance exam. His parents found a wife for him. After getting married, he taught at a primary school in the village. Because he had no experience, in less than a week he was boycotted by students, causing him to be fired. Returning home, his wife gently wiped away his tears and comforted him, saying, things that don't satisfy you are full of them, some people can vent them, some people can't vent them, you don't have to feel sorry for them. So, there will be more suitable things waiting for you. Later, he went out to work for others, but was sent home by his boss because he worked too slowly. At that time, his wife told him, movements are always fast or slow. People have worked for so many years, and you are just a student reading books, how can you be as fast as them? He went through a lot of work again, but it was still the same, most of which he left unfinished. However, every time he returned depressed and disappointed, his wife always comforted him and never complained. When he was over 30 years old, thanks to his natural ability in languages, he worked as a teaching assistant at a school for the disabled. Later, he built another school for the disabled. After that, in many cities, he built many other branches. Since then, he has been a boss with thousands of assets. One day, after success, he asked his wife, Every time I feel hopeless, what makes you always have such faith in me? She answered simply and simply, A piece of land, not suitable for growing barley, can try growing beans, if beans are not suitable, you can try growing cucumbers, if even cucumber doesn't work, then sprinkle some buckwheat on it and it will definitely bloom. Because a piece of land, there is always a suitable seed for it, and in the end there will be a harvest on that land. She is truly a wonderful wife with unwavering love and faith in him. No one is useless in this world, it's just that we don't put them in the right place. Story 2, An Unforgettable Story A young man sought his elementary school teacher at a wedding. He came to greet the teacher with all respect. Do you remember me? The teacher said. I don't remember much, let's talk about you. The student said, I was in your third grade class back then, and I stole a watch from a classmate. I'm sure you remember that. A classmate had a very nice watch, so I stole it. She cried and told the teacher that someone stole her watch. The teacher told the class to stand while he checked their bags. I realized that my action would eventually be exposed in front of all of my friends. I will be called a thief, a liar, and my conduct will be tarnished forever. The teacher made us stand facing the wall and close our eyes. The teacher checked each bag, and when he took the watch from my bag, he continued to check the last bag. When finished, the teacher asked us to open our eyes and he sat down in the chair. At that moment, I was really afraid that the teacher would expose my name in front of my friends. The teacher held up the watch for the whole class to see and gave it back to her. The teacher did not name the person who stole the watch. He didn't say a word to me and never mentioned it to anyone. During my elementary school years, no teacher or student told me about stealing the watch. I think you saved my honor that day. Don't you remember me? Why don't you remember me, teacher? I'm sure you must remember the story of me stealing the watch and you don't want to embarrass me. It is an unforgettable story. The teacher replied. I can't remember who stole the watch that day, because when I checked your pockets, I also closed my eyes. I think that taking that watch was a spur-of-the-moment action on your part. I don't want that act to remain in your memory as a stain, 
but rather as a lesson to learn and experience. So it's best for me not to know who that person is, and also not to mention it again because I believe that whoever stole the watch will know how to change to become a better person. Education is to make people know how to be good, education is not punishment. Story 3, Love It's been a year since Susan went blind due to a doctor's misdiagnosis, suddenly thrown into a world of darkness, anger, despair, and guilt. And all that's enough for her to hold on to life is because of her boyfriend, Mark. Mark is a military officer. He loved Susan very much, seeing how desperate she was, he decided to help Susan regain her strength and independence. First, he found her a job for the blind. But how can she get to work? Mark offered to take her to work every day, even though they were on opposite sides of the city. However, later, Mark realized that was not the solution. Susan will have to take the bus herself, get to work herself, that's the right way. But Susan is very sensitive, how will she react? Just as Mark thought, Susan was extremely panicked when she heard that she had to take the bus by herself. I'm blind, she reacted in a bitter voice. How do I know where I will go? He abandoned me. Mark was heartbroken to hear those words, but he knew what to do. He promised to ride the bus with her every morning and every afternoon, as long as it took, until she got used to riding the bus. For two weeks straight, Mark, dressed in military uniform, followed Susan to work. He taught her how to use her other senses, especially her hearing, to know where she was and how to get used to her new environment. He also helped her get acquainted with the bus drivers, asking them to keep an eye on her and keep her a seat every day. Finally, Susan said she could walk on her own. Monday morning, for the first time, they went in two different directions. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every day Susan took the bus to work and took the bus back. Susan felt very happy because she could still do everything herself. On Monday five weeks later, Susan took the bus to work as usual. While she was paying the driver for a monthly ticket, the driver suddenly said, I'm so jealous of you. Susan didn't know if he was talking to her or not. But after all, who would be jealous of a blind girl who is fighting to live? She asked. Why are you jealous of me? Because you are cared for and protected. You are truly happy. Am I protected? What do you mean by saying that? For the past few weeks, every morning I have seen a guy wearing a military uniform driving along then standing across the street watching you get out of the car. He watched until you safely crossed the street, entered the place where you worked and waved to you before driving away. You are truly a lucky person. Susan cried. Because she couldn't see Mark, but she felt Mark next to her. She is lucky because she has received a gift that she does not need to see with her own eyes to believe, the gift of love that can bring light to the darkest places. True love never breaks down. Story 4. What True Love Is The boy and the girl have loved each other since school. By the time both of them graduated and went to work, their love had lasted for several years. If you look from the outside, everyone can see that the girl loves the boy much more than he loves her. That's right. She loved him deeply and dearly. It seems that she considers him the only valuable asset in her life. Even more precious than her own life. Every morning, she woke up very early to buy breakfast for him. 
Then when she returned home, she reheated the food carefully, because she was afraid that if he couldn't eat it, he would have a stomach ache. After warming it up, she gently woke him up. As for him, he always woke up in a daze when he heard her call, quickly ate breakfast and then went to work. Everyone thinks that the girl loves the boy so passionately, if she does so much for him, the boy will feel extremely happy. And then their love will reach its final destination, a lasting marriage. But only when hardship comes do people realize what true love is. One day, when the girl went across the street to buy breakfast for the boy, she unfortunately had an accident. Because at that time, she was afraid that he would be late for work, so she hurried across the street without paying attention. A car crashed into her, seriously injuring her. The girl was taken to the hospital. There, doctors told her she had lost her arm forever. When the boy heard that the girl was in trouble and had to go to the hospital, he was very worried. The first day, he brought a bouquet of roses to visit her. When he saw her lying on the bed missing an arm, when he learned that she had lost an arm forever, he was extremely shocked. In that shock, there seemed to be a bit of fear mixed in. Then from that day on, the times he visited her in the hospital became less frequent and eventually disappeared. As for the girl, Every day she still waited for her lover to visit her. On the head of her hospital bed, there was still a bouquet of roses that the boy bought for her on the first day when he visited her. And then her heart gradually withered over the years like those rose petals. Is that love? The girl sacrificed a lot of things for the boy, gave a lot of things, and now she has to pay the price with her life. As for the boy, he didn't even have a few words of comfort or the least amount of concern for her. She cried a lot. She remembered a time when the two of them watched a foreign cartoon together. The content of the painting that is very touching. Amidst a forest of raised men's arms, a girl asked, can you hold a bouquet of flowers and wait for me in front of the house in the rain? Can you recognize the color of my swimsuit among hundreds of thousands of people at the beach? Can you calmly wash my socks in front of so many people's eyes? Can you hold my hand tightly when a great disaster comes? In the cartoon, the forest of arms gradually thins out. After each question, the hands become less and less. In the end, it's just an empty space. She felt tingly in her heart. It was like hundreds of thousands of needles were pricking her, causing her heart to bleed. Just because of the question, when the great tribulation comes, can you hold my hand tightly? A very simple question. But why can't anyone do that? Is it possible that love is so small, so weak, unable to overcome the slightest hardship, unable to experience the storms of life? How many loves have only bright rainbows and no storms? How many lives are there that have only joy without suffering? When in love, people can say the words forever, but when times are tough, who can hold the hand of the person they love, tightly grasping the love that they have built? In the girl's ears, the question still rings. When the great disaster comes, will you be able to hold my hand tightly? Story 5 Beautiful Brown Eyes The story takes place in a small hospital in a remote countryside. In the chemotherapy department, there was a young woman in the final stages of cancer. Although she was always tormented by pain, she never forgot to give us a grateful smile after treatments. 
When her husband came to visit, her eyes shone with happiness. He was a handsome, polite, and friendly man like his wife. I admire their love story. Every day he brought her fresh flower bouquets and a radiant smile. He came to her bedside, held her hand and talked to her. When the pain was too much, she cried and became irritable. He hugged her tightly, comforting and encouraging his wife until the pain subsided. He was always by her side whenever she needed him. He helped her drink sips of water and did not forget to gently stroke her eyebrows. Every night, before leaving, he always closed the door so the two of them could have moments together. When he left, we saw her sleeping with a smile still on her lips. But that night everything changed. When looking at the monitoring board, the results showed that the young wife would not survive the night. Even though I'm very sad, I know it's the best way for her. From now on she won't suffer any more pain. Leave the monitoring chart on the table. I wanted to go to the hospital room. When I entered the room, she opened her eyes and looked at me, smiling weakly, but her breathing sounded labored. Her husband sat next to her and smiled and said, Up to now the best gift I have given her is my love. And I cried when I heard that. I said if they needed anything, don't be shy. That night she passed away in the arms of her beloved husband. I didn't know what to do other than try to comfort and share this pain with her husband. With a tear-stained face, he choked out, Please let me be with her a little longer. Stepping out of the room, standing in the hallway, wiping tears, remembering her smile, remembering her eyes, remembering the tight hug she gave us. I remembering everything about her as a close friend. I could also somewhat feel the pain that her husband was suffering. Suddenly, from the room came a deep voice that I had never heard before. Not only me, but everyone was fascinated by his voice when he sang the lyrics of Beautiful Brown Eyes. Then the song's melody faded. He opened the door and called me to come. He looked deeply into my eyes, hugged me and said, I have sung this song to her every night since the day we met. Every day I usually try to keep my voice low so as not to disturb other patients. And I'm sure she still hear me sing in heaven tonight. I'm sorry to bother everyone. I just don't know how to live without her, but every night I continue to sing for her. Do you think she heard me? I nodded slightly, tears still flowing. He hugged me again, kissed my cheek and thanked me and everyone. Then he turned around bowed his head and softly whistled a familiar tune. As he walked away, I watched, silently praying for her, for him and for me to one day find a love like that. Story 6. Refuse to Let Go A few years ago, on a summer day in Florida, a boy decided to go swimming in the river near his home. The weather was hot and the river water was cool. He was so happy that he jumped in and swam out into the middle of the river without noticing that a crocodile was swimming behind him. At the same time, the boy's mother was in the house, and when she looked out the window, she was frightened to see the crocodile getting closer and closer to her son. Extremely frightened, the mother rushed out, many times faster than the boy when he ran to swim, running and shouting for her son. Hearing his mother's call, he discovered the crocodile and swam back toward shore. But it was too late, just when he swam to shore, the crocodile grabbed his leg. From the shore, the mother slowed down a second and grabbed his arm, and an unequal tug of war began. Crocodile is much stronger than the mother, but the mother still has too much love and cannot let go. That time, a farmer passed by, heard the mother's urgent cry for help, so he quickly took out a big stick and fought with the crocodile. The crocodile had his leg drop out. After weeks and weeks in the hospital, 
the boy was saved, but his leg has a very large, terrible-looking scar, evidence of the time he was attacked by the crocodile. A reporter came to see the boy when he had fully recovered. This reporter asked the boy if he could show his scar. The boy pulled up his pant leg, revealing his scar to the photographer. And the reporter said that this scar the boy will never forget. No, look at my hands first, the boy said and pulled up his sleeve. On his sleeve is a large even deeper scar along with very dark and long scratches from his mother's nails, when the mother put all her strength and love into keeping her child, dear boy, the boy told the reporter, is this scar that I will never forget, and I'm proud of it, proud that my mother refused to let go.